What's going on guys, it's your boy Jack, aka The Bald and Brief Fat, coming at you today's video, which is hand spawning an eight year spawn program. Um, doing the intro over here in the UK, because I got that excited, I completely forgot to do it over at the farm at Yashikigoi. Um, however, it is a 25 to 30 minute video, stick around all the way through, because we go through and we explain each individual step step by step we are going to be following this journey along throughout the rest of the summer uh and also going into sort of the full eight year uh, program for all the grading and whatnot so we're actually grading out some of these fish within the next probably uh, two to three weeks uh we're back over there in a week or so um so we'll get a bit of an update for you then and show you how they're getting along but obviously to make sure you do not miss out on any of these content do me a humongous favor please and swipe up around here or here there's going to be a subscribe button hit that and hit the all bell notification there is going to be a giveaway as well. So I've just hit 5,000 subscribers. So I'm going to give away 15 kilos of Yoshihiro Pro Food, which hasn't even hit the website yet. All you've got to do is comment in the video section down below saying, please put me in the giveaway. Um, that's all you've got to do, folks. And then we'll do a random wheel of death because the wheels of death is still a thing. Uh, we are going to be returning live, back lives every Friday moving forward as well. Just need a little bit of a rest and recuperation with the amount of stuff that we've got going on. So, random wheel of death um, to announce the uh, subscriber giveaway. Uh, 15 kilos of Yushiki Goi Pro Food. Um, but yeah, enough of me waffling on. Let's jump on a quick plane trip over to Poland. Let's go see these spawning. Let's go. So what's the plan with these now, Yoss? I know, so do you want to explain sort of how you've got these preps, what you've done to be able to bring them on, etc., etc. So yesterday we, I injected the female, so that is uh, is a hormones hyperfuser. So and then uh, normally around 12 hours, 14 hours later, they start spawning. So it's approximately uh, because yesterday 9 o'clock, 12, 13, 14, so it's now 11:30. And she already started doing a little bit, so we just wait until I see really some eggs coming out at one uh, really push. Then I take the two males off and I place the two males separate for half an hour. Then I leave the female in here alone. She will not spawn at that moment because the males will not push her, but she will ripen up the eggs quite a lot. So then the eggs are more ripe when I, take, uh, when I then take her out in half an hour. And then I'll take the males back again, take the sperm of the males, yeah. fertilize everything, and then uh, place them back. So what I place in here is an uh, Atarashi Deutsche Chiba, to, uh, together with the uh, Kikusui. And I always place two males in here to push the female a little bit more, but the first one is the male that we're going to use. So that's a really very dark type Kikusui. And we are going to go now for the metallic Deutsche Chiba, fully metallic type. And then in the red, and in the uh, uh, more the golden type of tint. So that's what we suspect from this breeding. So this is the first breeding, this is the first tryout, first time female and first time male. So uh, what we will do with these is we just have to, we need one pound for this later on to go outside to see how the development is in the coming uh, in the coming one or two years to uh, to be, and then we we'll know if the parent fish is good enough to use on the later uh, later occasions. So, so this is more so like an experiment that you're running at the moment, yeah. This is just a new experiment. See what the coloration will be if we use these two lines together, just so we know what the uh, what the pigmentation, coloration, body shape, all these other things are uh, of this uh, new line. So, so we and we keep them then uh, for the next two years inside. Then we don't use them anymore. But uh, then we know in two years, we know exactly what we can suspect from this breeding. And then we have a new spare one, a new uh, completely different line that we can use into our own uh, bloodline from uh, the other line of uh, Atarasi and uh, Deutsche Rado Chiba. And we can cross this, for example, back then to our uh, other lines. So in essence then, this is the first of probably an eight year project in total? Yes. This is so the first you, step to create something again new. So you, this has never been shown before, no? No, this has uh, never been done on this on this type of uh, fish. Yeah. Check that for a Balding Reef exclusive. Yeah. Um, obviously, the the more time that we spend with the chaps over at Yoshiki Goy, 
obviously we'll be able to follow this line all the way through. What are you hoping to, to be able to pull out of this? Is, is, there, is there an idea or is with this being the first born, is it a little bit of a more of a guesstimate at this point and then you hone it in later on? Or? No, because in the uh, Kikasui there's already uh, Deutsche Red Chip inside. Yeah. And in the uh, Tarashi there's also uh, Deutsche Red Chip already inside. But what I want to do now is create metallic Deutsche Ochiba with a nice bluish type of a skin and then uh, uh, more the red but also the brown peppers but more into this red pigmentation. That's where I want to go but then in the metallic type. Yeah. So my guess is from this outcome 85% will be metallic. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. So obviously a lot of people are going to have some questions at home. Is it safer to hand spawn fish if you know what you're doing or is it safer to let them go naturally? Now, you see, she started now, so then you already know that the uh, eggs are coming out, they are really pushing, and I see some eggs in the, in the brushes too, so we take the males out in a moment, but uh, uh, you can do both ways. So if you know what you do by hand spawning, then it's quite safe. Yeah. If you, uh, 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 same thing when you have the fish staying in the bassin and let the natural spawning, also that is quite safe, but uh, 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 it takes a little bit more effort if you do hand spawning. Yeah. So if you do just natural spawning, the fish will recover uh, easier after that as when you do the hand spawning. Yeah. So you have to look after the fish more as uh, just a natural spawning. Yeah. Fantastic. So are we going to be able to see today the steps that you go through with the eggs to fertilize them and things like that? The fertilization you will see. So uh, our golden take now first will be the males that need to come off. And I will look at the brushes now, but you can see on the brushes. Yeah. You see already nicely the eggs on top of the parts that stick out. You see the eggs already standing. You see? On top you see already small eggs standing on the brushes. Yeah. So she gives already a, a, a lot. So I, I think we can take her already out because I think she started already maybe a half an hour ago when we were on the coffee. Yeah. So, and now it's their coffee time. Yeah, so typical with koi spawning. Yeah. Yeah. Never, never goes to plan when you want it to. They, they, they wait for you always. to have a break when, yeah. you, when yes, you're not you watching. Have to just have always watch and watch and watch and watch and then all of a sudden it's, uh, it's so on. So I prepared already a bowl with anesthesia. So what I do now first is get the female out. And for that, I'm going to get one now. I'm going to get the koi sock that has... Uh, yeah, I need that in a moment. Yeah. But I need uh, one koi sock that holds water. So I need to get one now. Okay, I can send Back one of the boys moment. if you need to. Yeah. Back at the moment. Oh my God, I am so, so excited <sighs> to see this done. Obviously, I know when people do it in Japan and stuff like that, that, that yes, there's content out there online like this, but, you, but you, you literally do not get to see the full step-by-step -step process. We're literally going to see how they're going to fertilize the eggs, how they're going to put them into the tumblers, where the eggs are then going to be moved to. To be part at the start of this, this was not planned. I did not realize that this was going to be the start of an eight-year project. I am so, so excited to be able to watch the development out through these fish. It's an eight-year project. Wow, absolutely incredible. Snap back to your second when Yoss is back. Let's go. This fish is uh, since Torsai already inside. So, yeah. so what's happening at the moment, Jos? Is, is this the bowl of sedate that the crew's in? There's anesthesia inside, so we just wait until he is under, uh, until he uh, really comes over. Because he has to be completely under uh, narcos, so uh, otherwise you can't you can't do anything. Yeah. Because if it's still moving and you dry it up, because we have to dry the koi in a moment, because one drop of eggs and then one drop of water and the eggs will cling together like a club already. So it has to be completely dry before we can, uh, for all we can really stripe the fish off. Mm -hmm. So in a moment I will sit down on the chair and then he puts the fish in my hand so I can dry it completely and then we push the eggs off. And we do the same thing with the males. Yeah. But the males don't need to be that dry, you just need to have the, uh, the anal part and the, 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 the anal fin completely dry because when you take the eggs, uh, the sperm off of them, you just put a syringe on there and then you pull on the syringe to get the, to get the sperm off. Yeah. So with the female, whereabouts do you actually inject the female or is that a big trade secret? No, no, we always inject a little bit at the front of the belly 
this maybe I can show you later. Mostly when I turn it around and clean it and dry it, you will see the spot where it's injected. Yeah. But you, there are more spots to inject. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. You can start doing what you need to do. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Yeah. But she was even quite a lot bigger before uh, uh, before we took her out now, so I think quite a few eggs are already in the bassin. Yeah. Well, that's not a problem because they can hatch in the bassin. So. Uh. So how many eggs for this female would you would you estimate that you'd you'd, you'd potentially hand strip to there? Uh, four hundred. Thousand. Four hundred gram. Four hundred gram. That's about three hundred thousand. Yeah. Three fifty, something like that. Yeah. So if you have four, you could calculate about uh, 70 until 90,000 eggs, depending on the variety. Some varieties have bigger eggs, so then you have 400 gram, but you only have 300,000 or 200,000 offspring. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, daft question. Bigger the eggs, bigger the fry? Uh, in the beginning, yes. Yeah. But the young fry, the other fry will come up very fast. Yeah. So, for example, Kahako and Sanka have much smaller eggs. Then, for example, this variety or a chagoy or a, a karashi goi, etc. So, mostly the smaller eggs are the kohaku and the uh, sanka. Yeah. And also, what you will see is when you have uh, different varieties, the the eggs all have different colors. Yeah. It's not that one. Uh, that, this one's a little bit darker. That's more gray. That's more a little brownish tint even, and etc. So, from every variety that you take, almost uh, uh, there's nothing that uh, they come close. If you have six breedings done. And you would have six bottles, you would six, see six colors. Yeah. It's very strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, you just now tip a little out sometimes, see what will happen. And you see the belly is very soft. Yeah. Very, very soft, very weak. So when you just have to push a little bit and you see already eggs coming. Yeah. So, yeah. So now I'm going to take my seat <coughs> so I can dry the fish. <coughs> John. So now we dry the fish. This is so, so exciting. Just with the hand now. So you, you always need to keep the fish also with the tail up because when you put the tail down, the eggs will come out naturally already. So you see? Yeah. Just a little push. There you have the eggs already. See? So. So that's dry enough. Just to be sure that there is no water, because all the water you get on this fish, on the eggs, these eggs will not hatch anymore because they can't be fertilized because when there is water on, they will close. You see? No, you just push the eggs out. Oh, wow. And gently, you stripe the eggs off. So there's no pressure in your hand no there pressure. or anything like that? No, no. no. As soon as you have pressure, you know already that the eggs will not fertilize anyway because they are too fresh. These, these are ripened, so that's why you give the injection with the hormones, so the eggs will ripen. And then uh, 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 as soon as they start spawning in the bassin, they hit one or two times. Normally you take off the male then for, uh, for a while, for half an hour, then the rest of the eggs will ripen in the body. And then everything goes. But these also, again, very small eggs. And then you see all of a sudden that almost nothing is coming anymore, and then you just say, that's enough. The rest you can do then in the end of the sun itself. So what I very often do then is, you see now, the belly is now like a pudding. Yeah. You see, it's almost it's completely gone. Oh, like yeah, a wow. pudding. Very wide. Right. Yeah, all soft. So the eggs are almost all gone. So you, then, you just do this, now we do one more time. Done. So whereabouts on the fish oh, did well. you actually inject on, on this one? Was it, I was injected it this one there with the needle spotters. Yeah, so you can see that John? So you always feel here's a strong bone and on the side of the bone. Oh yeah, so just, yep. yeah, you can literally feel right where it's yeah, on yeah. the soft part there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's always amazing. in the soft part. Yeah. And now you place her back. Papa, she can recover, there will still be some eggs inside. And she can do that then in the bassin herself. No, okay. Yep. He's gonna take the mail now. To see this is absolutely mind-blowing. I've literally got goosebumps. 
Careful by walking yep. backwards. <laughs> and what we normally do is we weigh this on the scale so we know how much we have. Yeah. That's what we normally do, but because this is a, 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 a new breeding, a new tryout breeding, so for us it's not important, so important how much uh, uh, eggs we have, because we normally only keep one pound and then uh, uh, we wait for the rest. Yeah. Uh, yeah then. So I think that was Polish for one. Yeah. <laughs> so is, is this what you enjoy most about the... Uh, uh, the Hobbit, well, what the I enjoy Hobbit most the is the first selection. What yeah. we did at uh, the uh, uh, beginning of, the, of, your, of your trip. So that's what I enjoy most because in the uh, early selection, first selection, I see the future. Yeah. Then I know if we succeeded, if we improved, or if it's uh, steady like uh, the year before, all things like that. So I, uh, that's for me, is the, yeah, that makes the, the most fun, is the first selection. Yeah. It's always the biggest work too, but it really is something like, uh, yeah, that gets me on my feet. Yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely, yep. absolutely. Yep. So how, how many spoons do you reckon you've done this year then, so far? Uh, about 40, 38, I believe, yeah, 38. 38, this being the 39th, or Isn't this being the 38th? No, this is 38. This is 38. Yeah. So 38 in total, and some spawnings we have so many eggs, and because we have so many varieties, we just keep, let's say, 200 gram. For example, if we do karashi breeding, I have 1.5 kilo. Wow. So that's one and a half million karashi, then I just keep three or four hundred gram, that's it, done. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So when you, uh, when you are hand stripping, do the, do the eggs always look this kind of colour in the mix? No, no, no. So not only the egg colour will no. change, the solution around it will change the, uh, too? The uh, quark will be much more orange. Yeah. And the shower is a little bit brownish tint. And then you have uh, chagoy also a little bit almost greenish tint even. So that's why uh, all the, doesn't matter what type of fish you take. If the variety is different, you have a different type of uh, action. Wow. All right, snap back to the second when the males are ready. Let's go. So I push now just a little bit. And then the sperm comes off, you see? So will it be an even ratio from both males? No, I only take this male, because this is the male I want to use. Yeah. If this male would not have enough sperm, then I would take the other male too. Yeah. But then I would separate the eggs in two balls, because otherwise I would not know which male is what. And you need a lot of sperm to fertilize this kind of volume of eggs? Oh, no, you don't need so much, but the more you have, the better uh, 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 chance you have that you succeed. But you don't need that much. Sometimes yeah. I have 500 grams and I have, uh, 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 in the syringe that is here, then I only have this much and everything is fertilized. Wow. So there are millions of these uh, live sperms in there, so. No. More than enough. So now the male goes back, and as you can see, with this, in this way with the syringe, we have no problem. Yeah. Oh, and the male can recover. You see the females yeah. already Females up already again. over there. The male's already turning over, which is absolutely awesome. Yeah, Alright, yeah, snap back in a second. When we're at the next stage with Jos and his friend. Yeah, is this? So is this just So the sperm here? will go in here now. In this way, in this way, we have the sperm already saluted with a lot of fluid. This go here. And then take them up. So, in this way, we have a lot of water, but also all the sperm spores are everywhere. So you put it now in the with the eggs, then you have a better fertilization. Or you just put it with the eggs. So these will now become sticky, right? Yep. 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 Oh, you just mix it. Wow, look at the volume there. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Ik hoop dat ik geen water is. Nee, dat was het al ene klont. Nee, dat weet ik. Dus. Heb ik eerst een kloor gemaakt dus. Ja. So we've done a lot of spawns back home, but naturally, never, never hand spawn, but to see it done in this method. You can do this with also with the basket, but no problem. 
So, in and then throw them yeah, over we just throw them over the brushes now in the moment. Yeah. So we take uh, the female and the papas we take out. We just let it stand over a little bit and then uh, we take the parents now out. Parents go to the basin. I can yeah. shake. Yeah. Then you can say hello okay. to, to Cornelia. Say first hello to Cornelia. <sighs> okay, stand uh, back in a second, guys. You, air, air by. So you can just take it and then place it to the other basin. Papa, that's one. And that's number two. Wait, I'll try to do this way. Then this you way. don't need to walk around. Yo. Carefully on us. And then I take the third male in a moment, which we call the tryout male. <laughs> There's a small space in here, so we have a big stick on the net, but we need it to come to the end of the basin. So. So the other males in here now, will, will they get into the mix as well? Sorry? So the other male, the other fish that are in here at the back, will, will they join the mix if the female's still got a few more eggs left in her? No, 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 they are just there, so, but I needed to get them out. Yeah? Yeah. Can you this thing out, make a little bit of 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 a little bit a little bit of the water. So that's already off. And then you divide the eggs so they fall everywhere, they also fall on the floor. So you keep the, filter, the air pump running. So as you can see, if you throw it in, it will go open. And then you just flush a little bit extra. So And normally we do this in the bottles. So we have then uh, the eggs all separate, but then we have to take care. This is some, uh, something for a later video for the next season, because this is the last reading from this year. But then we will show you how it works on the bottles, but yeah. then we have to take the glue of the eggs. Yeah. And that takes about two and a half hours. Yeah. So to take the eggs, uh, take the glue off, and then we can place them in the bottle, then all the eggs are free and they can hatch in there. Now, because it's just a tryout breeding, that's why we only need one pound. So if you have 100, 120 gram of uh, fry, and the rest we will just kill. Yeah. We also have no more space than uh, 420 grams, so one pound is ready for that. And then on this temperature, the water is now 24, 25 degrees, two days to fish will hatch. Yeah. Just two days. And then four or five days later, we take our 120 gram off, they go to the pond, and the rest will be, uh, will be destroyed. Yeah. We just uh, flush away the rest. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's the entire program of uh, our breeding is done. Uh, with this arrangement with the male, it works better because you can also uh, put, uh, uh, take the male and then put the sperm directly on the eggs. But then the sperm is dry, the eggs are dry, so you have less of a fertilization. Yeah. So if you put the uh, eggs into a bowl and then the sperm into a cup of this, uh, that is water that has uh, uh, four gram of salt inside, yeah. so that means that the, uh, that the eggs don't uh, cling together directly. So you need to have uh, uh, four grams of salt per liter of water. Yeah, so you're using fresh water, four grams per liter, and then that's what was inside of the... That was inside of the, the, of the cups, yeah. where we put the, yeah. Because when you would take normal water, and you would the sperm in there, there's no problem with that. But as soon as you then throw it uh, with the eggs, the eggs will be like one bomb. Yeah. So they will directly cling together. Yeah. So if, it, if it's with the salt solution, they have the same salt solution as what's inside the body of the female. And at that moment, when uh, you put the, uh, the water in there, then the eggs don't cling. Because it's the same natural situation as what's in the body. Yeah. And then the sperm can fertilize the eggs, and then you can just place them into uh, the basin that you want to have them. Fantastic, fantastic. I mean, like I say, it's been an absolute whirlwind this trip. We've got a hell of a lot of content out there. 
Uh, again, thank you very, very much for showing us this. I really, uh, really do appreciate it. As I said earlier on, we, we've done a lot of spawns back home in the UK ourselves. Obviously, we don't need to now because our project has been successful. Uh, we will still do a couple, though, naturally. But yep. obviously, to, to, to see the way that it's been done here and for the educational side of things, I think you guys at home are going to absolutely love it. Please give me some, some love in the comment section down below and uh, give me some love the TBR way. Uh, follow me on... Facebook and Twitter, uh, which is at the Balding Reefer. Instagram's at the dot Balding dot Reefer. Hopefully, we can get some photos out of Yoss uh, and possibly some short uh, 15 to 20 second videos that we can actually put out up on shorts when these start to become uh, free swimming and whatnot, and we can follow a little bit of the journey uh, yep. along. We're back over here in a week's time, so hopefully by then there should be free swimming, right? I think so. Yep. Yep. So yeah. Other than that, stay safe, stay sane. Most important, people, stay happy. Balding Reefer. Out. out.